Hi guys, in this video, I will be going more in depth into Gemini implementation. Right now, I am in the Gemini documentation. Every link I will be showing in this video will be in the description. Here we can see Gemini can be implemented in various ways. It can be in Python, in JavaScript, Go and Java. But what we are interested in is doing it through a REST API. So, implementing it through REST API is not that difficult. It is actually straightforward. Let's look deeper. This first line here is the API link we will be using. In the headers, we need a Gemini API key, which we will create later on, and a content type, which is how we are sending the response or receiving it. And for the dash X, meaning the method we are using, will be the post method. Then dash D, which is the body, will be all the data we are sending, like the history, the prompt, and so on. So here in Studio, to be able to send HTTP request, we need to allow our game to do so. By default, it is disabled, but we can always enable it. To get access to enable the HTTP requests, we need to publish our game first to Roblox. So do that first. Once it is published, go to Game Settings, then Security, then toggle the option, then save it. To start off, I will create a module script that will handle all the AI requests and a script to use that module script. I am using a module script because we can always require it in any script we want. Create the AI module script in server script service. We don't want exploiters looking into our code and stealing it. Name it the AI module. Then create a normal server script that will call the AI module. Okay, in our module script, we will create a general function that will do all the API request for us. I will call the function chat. For the parameters, I will be accepting a text prompt, which has to be a string. Then, in our normal server script, we will require the AI module and call the function with a text prompt of Hi, how are you? Now back to our AI module. At the very top, we will get the HTTP service. Then we will create a variable for the Gemini API key and another for the API URL. Right now, we will get the API key we will be using for our AI module. In this website is where we can get the API key. It has a bunch of things you can look at as a developer, so feel free to look into it. But for now, we will just be getting the API key. At the top right corner here, click on Get Started. Then at the bottom left here, click on Get API Key. You will get a page like this. Right here, click on Create API Key. Give a name to your API key. In this case, I will just name it this. Then in the Project section, click on Create Project. Then give it any name you want. Once created, just select it again and click Create Key. It should have a key right now, which is this one. If you click it, the API key will be right here. So copy it. In Roblox Studio, because API key is like a password, I won't be storing it here. I will be storing it in a separate module script. So I will create a new module script inside the AI module. I will name it API key. Then inside it, I will delete everything and just return only the API key. Then in the Gemini API key variable, I will require the API key module. For the API URL, oh, I made a mistake there. It's with a L, not a K. The API URL is just this right here. So copy it. Then in our AI module, paste it in the API URL variable. Now time to work on the chat function itself. First things first, we are gonna construct the request body. This will contain the contents of what we are sending. If we look in the documentation, we can see that for the contents, we have a parts table inside, then inside the parts key, which is a table, we have the prompts or text we are sending. Back to our AI module, all we need to do is inside the contents table, add a parts table, then in the parts table, we're gonna add a text key and the value will be the text prompt. Okay, now we need to encode this table. By that, I mean to turn the request table into a JSON format HTTP can understand. Before we start sending the request, there are some data we need to define first, like our API key, URL, etc. In the documentation, we can see that the first data will be the API URL. So in the AI module, we will create a URL key and the value will be our API URL. Then the next one will be the headers. In the documentation, it is stated that we need two header keys, the API key we are using and the content type, which is the format we are sending or receiving the data. So in our AI module, we will create a headers key inside it. The first key will be the API key. The value will be our API key. 
The second key will be the content type, and the value will be in JSON. For the next key for our request data will be the method on how we are sending this request. There are different methods like get, create, delete. But the documentation is telling us to use the post method, so in the AI module, we will create a method key, and the value will be post. And for the final key will be the body, which is the contents of what we are sending. We will create the body key, and the value will be the request body we created earlier. That will be all. Now one thing to have in mind is that, when we send a HTTP request, it won't always be successful. Sometimes it can return an error because of unexpected reasons like server failure and so on. So to avoid those errors in our code, we will be wrapping the request sending section in a pcall function. This way, we can always catch the error and avoid it from breaking the whole script. To do that, all we need is to create the two variables that pcall returns, success and result. Success tells us if the request was successful or not, and the result is either the error or the results from our request. Then inside the function, we are going to do the request using request async, and the parameter will be the request data we created earlier. Then down below, if the request was successful, we have to make sure there is an actual result. Inside we will decode the result, basically turning it from JSON to a Lua table. Then we return the text response from the result, which is always the first item in the table. If by any chance the request fails, we will create a warning by sending the results. In this case, it will be in an error. Then repeat it here too. Right here, it is candidates with a D. In our server script, we will print the result of asking the bot, how are you? Then we test. We can see it works perfectly. The bot responds to us as expected. We can even ask him a random question like this, and it will still respond to us. Before we continue, if you are actually enjoying this video or you find this video helpful, take the moment to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to motivate me to create more videos like this. I try as much as possible to upload every week, so please support me if you can. So, one of the most important thing when it comes to AI systems like this is the context or history of the conversation. Like at some point we need to be able to ask questions like, what do you mean, explain further, I didn't understand, etc. Right now, the AI bot always responds like we just started a new conversation, so we need to add history. To do that, we're going to have to store the history on our end, in this case inside our Roblox game. In the server script, we will create a variable that will store the history of the whole conversation in a table. Then in the chat function, we will pass the history as the second argument. In the AI module, we will add the history as the second parameter. We will create a function that will create each prompt message's data structure. For the parameters, will be the role, that is a string and a prompt. Then inside the function, we will return a table. Inside the table, one of the keys will be the role, which can be the user, the person asking the questions, or the model, which is the response the AI gave. Then the other key will be the parts key, that contains the prompt we are sending. If we look into the documentation, you can see exactly how the history is constructed. We have a data table of what the user initially sent with the role as user, then the response of the bot with a role of model, and another of the user with the role of user. Now, in the chat function, we need to update the history every time we prompt something or the bot replies. So at the top here, we will insert into the history the user's prompt with the role as user. Then in the content key inside the request body, we will change it to the history. Also change this to request body as well. We want to encode the request body, not the history. Then down here, where we get the response from the bot, we will store the response on a variable. Then insert into the history the response from the bot, with the role as model. Then just return the response text variable. To test this, in the server script, we will create two prompts. One telling the bot my name, and the other asking what my name was to see if the bot remembers it. Then here we'll print prompt 1, then print the response. Repeat the same for second prompt. We will also print the history to see how it is being structured. Then we test. Here when we ask the first prompt, we get this response right here. If we look into the history, you can see we have two tables inside it. The first one is the prompt I sent with the role as user, and the second one with the role as model, which is the response from the bot. And when we ask the second prompt, which is if it still knows my name, it clearly does. Now we can go ahead and add a third prompt that asks the bot to repeat. We repeat the same process for prompt 3. Then test it. First we tell it my name, it says hi. 
Then we ask him what was my name again, it tell us what my name is. Then we ask him to repeat what he just said, which he does. One thing to have in mind is that the response we get are generic responses you get when you ask like AI a question, nothing emotional, just straight to the answer. That's when system instructions come in. System instructions tells the bot how to act or respond. Here in the documentation, to add a system instruction, what we have to do is to add a system instruction key into the request body with this data. So going back to the server script, we will set a variable called behavior that will tell the bot to be a funny guy and to also end the conversation with Gigidi. I also want the responses to be as short as possible with maximum 10 words. We will then pass the behavior variable as the third argument in the chat function. So back to our AI module, we will define the behavior as the third parameter. Then inside the request body, we will create a table called system instruction. Inside it will be the parts table that contains the behavior we sent in. Now if we test it, you will notice that the responses are now kind of trying to be funny. You can see clearly that each response ended with gigidi, the second response too, and the third one too. Another thing with Gemini is that it has its own safety settings. These are the categories right here that you can configure, and these are the threshold we can use in each category. Like we can block the request if it has very few harassment content on it, or another category and so on. By default, it is set to none. One thing though, if we set it to something other than block none, if it detects something that falls into any of the categories, it will send a HTTP error, so have that in mind. To set the safety settings, we can do so by adding another key to the request body that is called safety settings. Where inside that key, we will have the category we are targeting and the threshold. To give you an example, in the AI module, right in the request body, we will add the safety settings key Inside it, we will add a new safety settings in which the category will be harassment and the threshold will be to block most of it. You can add more by just copying this section all over again and choose the category. If we test it by creating a fourth prompt saying the bot is fat, you can go ahead and delete the history print statements. Then repeat the same print process for prompt four and test it. You can see that, well, this time it isn't blocked because the AI will always try to play it off. But if it actually detects a very bad harassment, it will block it and you will get an error right here. That's basically it for the video. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, thanks to these Patreon members for supporting me. If you got any questions, feel free to join my Discord server to ask them. I will try as much as possible to be online to answer those questions. If you want to know how to make a full AI companion with Gemini, have a look at this video. That will be it, and goodbye.